What's going on people? This is Jagos and this is going to be a little bit about Bloodstained but I'm going to sit here and try to take it from just talking about Koji Igarashi, Inafune and things like that. I've kind of already did that before with the Inafune report where I talk about one person but I kind of want to talk about the system that's going on here. Um, that requires a lot of history lessons and things like that. I'm not going to have a lot of links in the underbar but I kind of want to sit here and go through everything so to try to sort out what is going on with the Japanese gaming industry. The reason that I want to go through the Japanese gaming industry is the fact that the game <coughs> excuse me the, the fact is the gaming industry in Japan has imploded. A lot of things that used to be happening that used to be the status quo that was the tradition have basically been going out of style in some way shape or form the reason being is that the Japanese economy has been lapsing for the last 20 years that's one of the issues most of the money is not in Japan it's not going to new jobs people don't have as much money for entertainment they're getting basically you know high taxation those types of things I mean some of the things that are going on the salary man has been losing wages while their female counterparts have been going into career business women type deals it's Abenomics I've linked to these things before I'll go ahead and link to those again so you can have a general overview of the Japanese economy this affects the gap Japanese gaming industry because if there's less money in the hands of people that go do their nine to five things like that if they're at home doing things that there's less money for them to do things they're gonna go to what you know the freest game which tends to be a cell phone where they can play a game be quick about it and be done so what this means also is the fact that with regards to the console gaming industry there's been a lot of changes now these changes have affected Japan as well as the United States as well as Europe and other global markets but I'm doing this kind of to sit here and focus on Japanese gaming you can't sit here and look at the publishers who control the industry and not sit here and think about what they're doing to their workforce as these economic hard times continue to hit. Inafune made a calculation that he was going to be able to make money on, in the mobile market while that market was booming and hot. Unfortunately, it's run cold because less people have money for you know games on the on for the most part. They are going to free to play games, gotcha games, those types of things. And they're using arcades less and less, so arcades are going down. Now, because the arcades are going down, less people have more people have consoles, or they may have older consoles that they like to play. Japan has a better arcade, but the fact is that that doesn't sit here and seem to affect them as much as it, it does in America because we've had it publisher oriented for years now, decades now. So, what is going on here? The fact of the matter is, when we look at video games for the most part, in Japan, the arcades are going down, consoles are coming up a little bit because people are buying either older consoles or they're not buying the newest one. <clears throat> There's less market and less money in the, in the place that's circling around because more people are going to goods. Entertainment suffers. So that is what why most of the publishers are in some way, shape, or form adjusting to this new normal you have Konami that decided to decimate its workforce and the reason that it did that it first got rid of Igarashi or then it got rid of Hideo Kojima all of their popular games they own them and they're trying to do the nostalgia banking that I've talked about earlier if anybody has a question about nostalgia banking I'll go ahead and I'll um, talk about it 
and then I'll go ahead and define it in a separate video. But the fact is, since they own the properties that the developers had already created, they're going to make their own quick cash ins while basically ignoring the fact that with these well established franchises, they were made by the developers who are being pushed out of the industry. They're being pushed out of the industry in a very, very clear and concise way, similar to, say, Tomonobu Itagaki or the developer, the, the publisher, essentially just sits here and says, no, we don't need you anymore. We're going to make our money on this last hurrah, similar to Hideo Kojima, and then we're cutting contact with you. And you, since we control what you used to do, you can't go back to it. So you have to create something brand new. Hideo Kojima had to do it, Koji, and those things. What this means is, now that these developers are out of a job with their uh, publishers for decades or anything, they have to create their own infrastructure. This is something that people do when, you know, you get fired from a job, you can possibly link up with 10, 15 people, create your new job, or do something in that vein. Now, some of the older people that kind of left their jobs for whatever reason, Hideki Kamiya is one one example, Hironobu Sakaguchi, they left on better terms, better times, when it wasn't as much of a downturn, and they could build that infrastructure to sit here and take advantage of newer things. Like, for example, right now, Platinum Games is a very very marketable workhorse they continue to pump out games they are already set here set up to sit here and make the games that they want to do do a ton of projects and continue to make the money flow in some of the older publishers such as namco bandai are taking advantage of these types of things and they're not having a lot of downturn by sitting here trying to decimate their their developers Similar to what's happening with um, Sakurai and, or not Sakurai, um, Tekken, the Tekken guy. I forget his name off the top of my head, but it'll be in the underbar. But basically, my point with Tekken is that he's staying stable and they're trying to market the video game and they're trying to keep consistent with something like the fighting game community. So they don't have anything to worry about. So what you're seeing is. Some developers, some publishers are trying a new form of Japanese austerity. When With this Japanese austerity, they decimate their workforce, they cut, 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 and then the fact is, after they've decimated their workforce, they have to figure out how do we make money now. Konami is in that boat and basically has hollowed out everything that they could do to try to sit here and start something brand new. They don't have an educated workforce. They don't have a lot of people, a lot of talent right now because they haven't built that talent. And pretty much it's basically going to be a hit or miss if their next game is going to be extremely popular. Because as it stands, they've taken a lot of cues from Left 4 Dead nine years after the game came out. Now... Of course, they can make other games. They own the Fox engine, but you have to realize who made that engine and who changed it so that it worked for them instead of necessarily working for Konami, who doesn't know what the hell they're doing with it. They just own the property. Koji Galashi has the same, con the same thing. He has to build this infrastructure, and he's trying to do that while also trying to make games and trying to sit here and be committed to this new Patreon model when you can't get bank loans because the bank loans are still, you know, assigned to all of these older um, game publishers who don't want to sit here and have developers controlling the industry, which is one of the problems that they have. So this is more or less talking about systemic dysfunction. That systemic dysfunction is the fact that this is a system that has broken down, is not working for anybody, 
is not working in the best interests of the public. And then on top of that, you have to sit here and deal with all of the ramifications of all of the choices that are made by all the players involved. If Konami hadn't decimated its workforce, Kojima and others would still be there making games. And more than likely, they'd be making games still as a work for hire force. Which means that they could still sit here and use the old engines instead of having to make things from scratch, brand new, with their new developers and video games or whatever. I mean, this happens pr practically once every generation. We saw it last generation after Spirits Within that Hironobu Sakaguchi left and made his own game. Now it's just a lot harder because if you've been in a recession for the last 20 to 30 years, you have a lot of things that you have to catch up on. So, the fact is, it's not just about Bloodstained. It's not just about Inafune. This is a systemic dysfunction. And with that entire system being blown up, not working for almost everybody, People are trying to find new ways to do the things that they love to do, that they have passion for. It's just going to be a lot harder, even in this globally connected world. Now, I'll probably talk more about this as I see more information later, but I just wanted to give you all a preliminary. See if you all want to see more of these types of deals. And if you do, let me know, and I'll sit here and make more videos similar to this. Take care. See you next time.